two most familiar forms of infectious diseases are those which are either caused by bacteria or by viruses. And most people know that whilst antibiotics are effective against a bacterial infection, they're useless against fighting a viral infection. However, how do these antibiotics actually work? What's the issue with antibiotic resistance? We'll start with, let's look at the bacteria cells. They're different from human cells, which means they can be targeted as a result. Bacteria are a single-celled organism, so must carry out all the living functions within that single cell. We can't rely upon different cells to supply them with their particular needs. And one of these structural differences is exactly the cell wall, which is partly made up from amino acids in the form of sugar, which are combined to form peptidoglycan, or also known as murine. Since this structure is not required, as well as not even being present in human cells, human cells are not vulnerable to the murine being attacked, unlike bacteria. Then, when cells want to actually replicate, first they need to copy the DNA of the cell. DNA is normally stored in a tight bundle, but in order to copy the DNA, strands need to be loosened up into a long strip. This loosening is done by an enzyme called DNA gyrase. However, the DNA gyrase of bacteria and humans is chemically different. Finally, bacteria will actively pump a different range of chemicals into the cell from their external environment than human cells will. Meaning that these chemicals can actually reach far higher levels in a bacteria cell than in a human cell. Now, since bacteria are single celled living organisms, if their living processes can be disrupted in some way, the infections that they cause can be stopped. Antibiotics have three different methods of attacking these living processes. Then, first we have the penicillins, which include penicillin and amoxicillin. This stops the murine in the cell walls from linking up, results in the cell walls being fragile, eventually bursting, killing the bacteria. The macrolides, which normally end in myosin, include enthromyosin, are actively transported into the bacteria cell to prevent the bacteria from being able to produce proteins by binding to the ribosomes, preventing them from assembling the amino acids into longer protein chains. And then there are the fluoroquinolones, which normally end in the zaxin. These stop the DNA from being able to replicate by shutting down the bacteria's DNA gyrase. Now these three attack methods could be said to be directly killing the bacteria, starving the bacteria, or stopping the bacteria reproducing. These lines of attack don't stop the bacteria in, uh, infection getting worse immediately, but they do take some time to actually remove the bacteria completely, bring back the body to normal operation. This time lag between taking the medication and bacteria being wiped out is the fundamental key to antibiotic resistance, why completing the course of the prescribed antibiotic is important. A single species of bacteria, just like humans, doesn't have all the same identical DNA profile. Though due to their method of reproduction, differences between individuals in a single bacterial infection are going to be extremely small. So if one of the bacteria in the infection is slightly better at producing or storing proteins than others, they survive slightly longer than the others when attacked by a macrolide antibiotic. If this course of antibiotics complete completed, this slight advantage won't be enough to keep it alive. But the antibiotics course is actually stopped when the person starts to feel well, the majority of the bacteria are being killed off, more likely to survive than the other bacteria. When this antibiotic was first taken in this form, bacteria may have represented, say, one in a million of the bacteria present. But with its high survival rate, it may now represent one in a thousand. That bacteria then goes on to infect another person, who again doesn't complete the course of antibiotics, so this form of bacteria will soon become the dominant form. Once this form has become the dominant, it now goes on to infect somebody who completes the full course of antibiotics. This will normally result in all the adapted bacteria dying. But again, some slight variation in the bacteria, but one of those bacteria may now be able to survive the full course of the treatment. Eventually, that bacteria again becomes the dominant strain of the bacteria. This bacteria would still be vulnerable to the, say, a penicillin-type antibiotic, given enough time and enough exposure, 
especially to incomplete treatments, and it could become resistance to those as well. The more often antibiotics are used, the more often it's badly used, the quicker the bacteria become resistant to that particular form of antibiotic.